In today's video, we traveled out to the Midwest to visit Compass Mining's brand new Bitcoin hosting facility. All right, guys, so I'm here with Curtis from Compass Mining. How's it going, Curtis? Wonderful. Good to see you, hobbyist. So where in the world are we? We are in central Iowa. We are at our Iowa 4 location. Okay, fantastic. And tell us a little bit more about this location. Yeah, well, so we're in the middle of a cornfield. We're right next to a substation. We've got eight megawatts of energy deployed here. We're running around 2,000 miners today. We've got a little bit more room for growth, but working on some heat containment in order to get a few more units online. So what made you guys pick this location, Iowa or more specifically right here? Well, I, I think as you're well aware, it's all about electricity. So we are like literally right next door to a substation where we were able to identify that there was some stranded power. So we're working with a local municipal co-op, where we're able to help offset some of their stranded energy by paying them for it. So bringing uh, unused energy to life. All right, so we're out here in the middle of Iowa, and this is a Compass Mining, one of their brand new sites. Are you guys self-mining here, or what exactly is going on here? Yeah, I wanted to explain that. So when we bring a new facility online, what we've learned is sometimes there's challenges. So we, we initially deployed with Compass-owned machines so that we could stabilize the site. Now that we've done that, we are certainly hosting customer machines here. In fact, if you go to our marketplace and you're ready to buy a new miner, just select our Iowa 4 location and you'll be right here. All right, guys, I'm here with Abacus with Compass Mining. How's it going? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing awesome. So tell my audience a little bit more about these containers because they're not very traditional at least. Uh, no. So we do have the V-shape and that's, you know, arguably a little bit harder for the newer series, but we've made it work. So we've only got six of the uh, 21 series or the newer 21 series uh, per rack. And uh, we just kind of keep them as close to center as possible so that we don't have to deal with the point of the V's and how close together they would otherwise be. Nice, so um, you guys have four containers total on site mm -hmm. and uh, how many megawatts per container? Uh, we're uh, at peak two megawatts per container. Okay. Uh, we're trying to keep it a little bit under that. because we Smart. Uh, we don't want to go over eight megawatts. We yeah. We keep it right at there uh, for right now. Okay. Uh, until we build a new substation. Okay, and how many A6 per container? Uh, uh, about 500. All right, guys, I'm here with Cam with Compass Mining. How's it going, Cam? Living the dream. So let's talk about sound mitigation here at your Iowa location. Walk us through it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, sound mitigation at any of these sites is probably the, the number one PR concern that you're going to deal with. Um, the sound of mining is shocking to the uninitiated. Yep. And so um, it's something that can create some public relations issues. And so you want to be right on top of it as much as possible. And so first of all, setting up a site so you're far away from the neighbors, so you don't have anybody living right next to the site. The middle of nowhere, pretty much. Preferably, yep. preferably. Yep. Um, and we do have some neighbors, mm -hmm. quarter mile away, half mile away. And so um, we have in the process of getting some mitigating foam for the fencing to kind of knock down the sound just a little bit. But we've actually in the meantime, actually throwing up hay bales. Um, so happy the local community is happy to supply those to us yep. for a price, yep. of course. Um, but anything that you can do to just break up the sound so you can cut out the line of sight that anybody has. Yeah, I think it's smart and, and wise of Compass Mining to kind of take responsibility and get ahead of this a little bit, not only with the sound test that you guys are doing, but also, you know, these hay barrels that you talked about that you guys are putting throughout the facility it actually fits kind of the landscape out here, right? And I'll be honest, when I rolled up, I was like, what What are they doing here? What's kind of going on? Uh, and then you educated me on it. And, and I couldn't believe of like, you guys were using these for this purpose. So let's take a closer look and do a test with these. Okay. All right, so a quick test on just how effective these hay bales are. So right now we're on the farm side, the mining farm. So you can see the containers back here. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the noise cancellation. And then we're gonna go ahead and go on the other side of the hay bale. So check this out. All right, so now let's go on the other side of the hay bales and you guys will slowly hear the farm disappear behind us. Can you hear it? You can barely hear it. It's wild how effective these are at dampening the sound from the mining farm. All right, I'm here with Dylan with Compass Mining. How's it going? It's going good, how are you? Good, so tell me a little bit more about the power here at the site. What size site is this right now? So this is an eight megawatt site. We have four two megawatt containers and we're using a 2.5 megawatt transformer for each container. 
so we have a little bit of buffer. We like to use 80% of our load, so that way we have a nice 20% buffer. That's awesome. So then walk me through this, starting out at the substation, which is right next door. Walk me through the path that power travels to get all the way up to the miner. Yeah, so we have the uh, substation. We have the high voltage feed comes into our transformer where it lowers it to 415 volt. And then from there, we come into here. Uh, this is the main switch gear for each container. So these are the 400 amp feeds. Um, and they get distributed to each rack evenly, so that way we have even balance on each phase of the, the load. These are the VFDs that control the fan speed, and then we have the network gear up top. And then do you guys, uh, do you guys have any type of step down, and if so, to what voltage? Uh, so the feed here is 415 volt, okay. and when we split that between each three phases, it actually lowers to 240. So okay. each phase gets fed 240 to each machine. That's awesome. And then from there, you run into some type of PDU system? Yeah, so we actually have a, uh, it's a breaker panel okay. instead of PDUs. These are hardwired. Uh, so we have cables that run to each machine that are wired up to a 20 amp breaker in the panel. So this location participates in curtailment. And for my audience, what is that? So curtailment is where you will actually power down a site. Okay. And so we will not be consuming any power. And what happens is that, that power gets returned to the grid. And so in peak times where there's peak demand, think summer when everybody's running their air conditioners or the deep winter when everybody's trying to heat their homes, we can go ahead and return that power so that the grid is stabilized throughout that. Now, what that means for us is we usually get a cut rate on power or we get rebates from the power company, which allows us to drive down our overall cost of power. So our, our customers don't have to pay the high rate. They get to benefit in that curtailment program right from the get go as well. The other thing from the local community and something we actually ran into here in Iowa where we had some questions uh, from the mayor and his staff was, well, we're just gonna drive up the cost of power because we're consuming eight megawatts here at this site. So of course, everybody's power rates are gonna go up. In truth, they should go down if anything because we're consuming power that isn't being used and when they need it here in the community, middle of summer, for instance, we can return that power back to them so that the rate will stay low. Now, right now, actually, timing works out perfectly. I've never been to a site that is actually actively participating in curtailment. Tell me what's going on here today and how you guys are actually taking advantage of it. Yeah, no, it's good. It's it's not the economic curtailment, really, that we're going through. You can actually see it in the background. They're doing some work on the substation right next to the site. But when they curtail like this and we have an advance notice like we did, we're going to do maintenance on the containers. So we'll be able to get into the hot aisles today, do some containment, um, you know, seal up some cracks, make sure that the airflow is working right and get some other maintenance as far as fans done. And it just, it works out great for us. So let's talk about Bitcoin miner hosting a little bit. As a home miner, and as you guys know, specifically watching this, it's becoming harder and harder to crypto mine from home. One, the electric rates in the US have been going up more and more. I feel it. I stopped running some of my bigger units at home because of that challenge. So a lot of people in the industry, including myself, has started to rely on hosting. I actually have seven units hosted with Compass Mining at their Nebraska facility, and it works out great. The process is very simple. You buy an ASIC miner, you go ahead and have it hosted at their location. At the end of every month, they go ahead and bill you an invoice and you pay for the electric that you've used. It's simple and easy. And oh, what's the reward? I get crypto right into my crypto wallet at the end of every day. Simple and easy. I highly recommend you guys looking into it because crypto mining seems like it's so unobtainable. It seems like it's so far out of reach when it really isn't. So this is a brand new location for Compass Mining. What's the plans for the future here? Well, we were able to come online with eight megawatts. We needed to get energized with that. And then we did a load study with a local utility company and we were able to determine that there's 20 megawatts of additional capacity. So we're going to be building a substation right here on our property, expanding to 28 megawatts total. So huge shout out to the team over at Compass Mining for inviting me out to their Iowa facility. It's been super educational to learn more about curtailment, learning how they take advantage of that time period and what really happens and what that process is like. Listen, if you guys are interested in Bitcoin mining, maybe you wanna buy your first miner and do a nice little proof of concept to test it out, or you're looking to do 10, 20, 30, 100, feel free to reach out to the team at Compass Mining. I'm gonna leave a link directly down below to a direct contact over at Compass Mining. Other than that, guys, have a good day and happy mining.